We would love to see uh, a better day for Africa in the future. An African lifestyle. Welcome to Pan-African Lifestyle, where we rep the motherland. We post content regularly and invite you to subscribe and share. If you're a pal, that's a Pan-African Lifestyler. We would love to see uh, a better day for Africa in the future. There's one thing that we have heard over and over again in the wonderful discussion earlier is that investment into our youth is the way forward. If there are any investors that are listening and watching today, if you do not consider Africa as a viable investment, you're not considering yourselves or your future. Africa's future is your own future and vice versa. You know, I've, as an actor, I guess, you know, my uh, skill set, my superhero is my voice and my, my voice box and the bandwidth that I'm allowed to use it. I was born and raised in East London. I'm very proud of that. My parents come from Sierra Leone and Ghana. Howdy, buddy, Kushe. Any Ghanaians here? It's a I grew up knowing my culture, understanding my culture. But I also grew up in, in, in London where being African was something to be ashamed of. They made me feel small. They took the you know, joy out of my dark skin. So when I grew up and I got to a place where suddenly my dark skin was being applauded and shined and loved and shared and ad admired, I realized that I can only give all of that to Africa, to where my parents came from. My parents left their villages to go to the big city uh, to create dreams for themselves. But one day they hoped to go back to the village. They didn't go back to the village. They stayed. They stayed in England. I managed to go back to their village. I'm still going back to the village. I'm carrying the dreams they took to London. I'm taking them to our village. And basically, my parents invested their dreams in me as a youth. So that is essentially the metaphor of what we are doing when we consider Africa's investment, when we consider investing in innovation. And that's something that we all have to remind ourselves that that is the absolute um, opportunity with Africa. We do not need aid anymore. We need innovation. We need... We need partnership. When it comes to Africa, you know, it, it is my heart, so I can speak about it all day. Um, my film industry in Africa creates $5 billion a year. Okay, that's incredible. But yet it's still underserved. And the reason why it's important for us to serve the film industry is because it is a window into Africa. It is also a mirror of ourselves, okay? So that's why it's important to that if we want to change the narrative, we spend a little money in our media, our films, our narrative, our storytellers, our creators, because that is the way we change the narrative. Every other developed nation in the world has used film and television, books, media, and magazines to change their narrative not just to the world, but inwardly. So it's important that we grasp onto that notion as well. His Excellency, nice to see you again. Um, Danny Dama and Tony Tego, my, my partners in um, our program to build film studios 
across Africa. Currently, we call it West African Studios, but that's because it's a working title. But we've been working at this for, you know, three or four years to raise a plan that, you know, puts a facility at the center of African filmmaking. There's a lot of African filmmaking, but the facilities around that are, are something that is lacking. In South Africa, they have a big facility. A lot of film production goes there. But quickly, as we're planning this, we realize that policy is where the actual groundwork needs to be laid. Um, you know, we've studied the models of obviously South Africa, who have an incredible incentive package. Then around Europe, obviously, Greece, Morocco. These are all places where they, you know, they realize the value of the filmmaking dollar, and I've, I've brought that um, policy into play. Tony, Danny, and um, uh, the is it the film um, National, film, National Film Authority? Na National Film Authority have you know done the work, uh, put together a very comprehensive plan to propel Ghana into the forefront. Um, it needs to be robust, it needs to be com com um, competitive to the rest of the, the, the world, but we believe for sure, and I know you believe this too, it's been part of your legacy that you want to leave as well, that you know Ghana should step up in terms of attracting those filmmakers. So, you know, as we said uh, at, in the DC, I'd come and see you and present to you essentially just the, the parameters of what we need to do. In short, the work has been done. We've done a lot of the sort of understanding what international filmmakers need for Ghana specifically in tandem as we lay the ground for the studios. Um, I'm led to believe that there are some plans uh, for the studios, uh, some other studios to be brought to Ghana, which is fantastic, and you know, one should not cannibalize the other. But without, I think, the policy component, I think it's uh, safe to say that we could have as many studios as we want, but we will not have the filmmakers attracted here. So, um, I think one of the things to just highlight for you, you know, what I, I want to do personally myself, I have a film that I'm directing, um, and I'm hoping to bring that film, or at least some of that film, to shoot in Ghana. Mm -hmm. That film will be, I, I would say we would be here in December. We start shooting, we start pre-production in August. Some of the film, two or three weeks, will be in Ghana, say, by December. Hopefully, if we were to move with a fair wind and we were in agreement of what we could do in terms of the policy, we could case study my film as a, as a, a proof of concept. Um, I mean, you know, needless to say, it would take a, a, a lot of uh, collaboration to move quickly. However, it would, it would be very beneficial for us to show and to make an announcement to the world that Ghana is open for business. Here is the steps, the policies are in place, and we have actually bring in a film, um, one of the soil, I may say, to our country, and we're going to put our money where our mouth is. So in short, um, His Excellency, that's the plan. Um, we, you know, we're confident that you want to do the same as we do, but it's just a question of whether we can push this through with the relevant parties to um, make it happen. Thanks for tuning in to Pan African Lifestyle. Share your thoughts in the comments section and follow us on TikTok and Instagram at Pan African Lifestyle to be inspired. For awesome PAL merch, check out panafricanlifestyle.com slash shop. Keep repping the motherland. An African lifestyle